Hello, good day. Welcome back to Go on the Run. And today we're going to wrap up Go Fiber. Um, my apologies for not posting a video in a month. It is not for a lack of trying. This very video here, um, if my voice sounds a little bit weird, that's because I am actually recovering from some sort of flu or something that I caught when traveling, while traveling a few weeks ago. And I've been trying to record this video for some time. Um, this is going to be the fourth attempt to record this video. Not third time is a charm, but hopefully the fourth time is the charm. Let's just jump into it. So in terms of Go Fiber, um, I think we did quite a bit. So in this wrap-up video, what I want to do is revisit some of the middlewares that come with Go Fiber. We're not going to be writing code in this video. So it's basically just sort of review, especially in Wilmer. And then template, I want to talk a little bit about templates. We saw in our last two videos, we wrote Go template code to, or rather in the last video, we did two examples of using Go template to implement an application. And then I want to talk about JSON encoding and why this is something you should be aware of, um, especially if you plan to do performant applications or put application to production that might do a lot of JSON, either decoding and encoding, while you might want to be aware of this. So if we go to our GoFiber website, so gofiber.io, and you click on documentation, and right there are middlewares, and you can see middlewares are listed there. And we've been through this list before, and specifically, we have used the logger middleware. Um, I show you our mention at least how to use monitor middleware. It's pretty easy, but we use the logger and we use request ID. Now, as you can see, there are quite a few others here. Um, the ones that I think you should probably, um, I mean, I don't know what kind of application you're building, but definitely the ones to um, for modern application, I think you should be aware of, at least play with and know to use, um, is cross-origin request scores. So definitely one you should probably be aware of is cores, especially if you have your backend separate from your front-end application. Um, it's going to be important for you to configure cores so that only your application, if that's what you want, can make requests to your backend. Um, let's say you're not doing a general backend, but only for a backend for your application. So that's going to be important. Um, there's a um, key auth middleware. This one makes it fairly easy to um, implement key security, key authentication. Um, and this one makes it very easy to implement key based authentication. That's like when you have an endpoint, maybe you have registered at some website, let's say like OpenAI or even with Google Maps, and they give you a key and they say, well, every request you make include this key, attach this key to a header, and they'll tell you what the header name should be named. And so that can be used to validate or authenticate who's making the request, right? So you can then have a database where you um, store a key alongside the user. So for example, users might be allowed to create multiple keys. And so when a request comes in, you just use the key to go look in the database to see, oh, this key is tied to X user and therefore I know who it is. Um, you might also want to uh, consider looking at limiter. Again, if you build in endpoints, you want to be able to secure them. You also want to be able to log them. You want to be able to do things like attach a request ID so you can track things across multiple services, for example, and or multiple calls. And then also, you know, being able to possibly limit, maybe you're going to tie in limit with the key. So depending on the user, maybe you have some ability to say, well, this user is in the basic tier and they should only really make requests so often. And the reason why I'm pointing out limiter is because I cover um, how to use the Go limiter package um, to go in your 
uh, RESTful where you're building API endpoints, but now we see a limiter is actually built into Core Fiber. So this means that there is less work for you to have that capability without you having to sort of, um, you know, configure it yourself. These middleware should really help you write better and more production ready um, API endpoints. Um, definitely take a look at those. So I just want to draw your attention to it again before we finish. All right. A, another thing is templates. So we use Go template to write um, our application that, you know, when we say render, it read in the Go template file, merge it with our data and then return the results. So it looks something like this. But you can use any template engine. You can even write your own. And to implement a template engine, you simply just implement this interface. And so you can see it's just a load function that returns an error, and then this render function. Um, and that's it. But you may not need to go through the trouble of writing your own template engine. I don't know why you'd want to. Go template is pretty good. But if you don't, or pretty capable, I would say, or very capable, if you don't want to use that, you have stuff like Amber, which has been around a long time. Um, Handlebar, also been around a long time. Uh, mustache, been around. Uh, I can't remember between Amber, Handlebar, and Mustache, which one came first, but these guys been around since the days of Angular, JS, and so and before, so long time ago. And of course, good old HTML. So, um, and the last thing is about JSON encoding. Now, the built-in encoding such JSON um, package in Go is awesome. I'm very useful and I use it all the time. However, um, people have done some benchmarking and found ways to make it even faster. And um, basically, Go Fiber supports these some of these other ones here. And there are other ones out there, but the nice thing is that these have been tested with Go Fiber and supported by the, 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 the um, this project. So maybe if you need to change or consider changing from the encoding JSON, you already have ones that are um, built in. Now, why would you want to use it? Well, like I said, some of these are considerably faster than the built-in one. And so why does that matter? So let's say you build an endpoint. And again, production, we're talking about production endpoint here. So it's, this is more than just your little application you have at home that you're testing. Maybe you're at work and you're building something that's going to take thousands of requests and in send thousands of responses, then it's worthwhile to take a look at these. I've played with um, this easy JSON one, um, and I believe Go JSON also. And so some of these are really nice in that they have the same um, API as the standard ones. So it's just a matter of switching, um, importing the right one that you want to use. And that's it. Pretty much everything else is pretty easy. And as you can see, in terms of Go Fiber using it, well, you just override the encoder um, and decoder interface. And because, like I said, these use the same in um, interface as the built-in one, well, everything just works without any you doing anything else other than this. So <laughs> it really couldn't be any easier. Um, sorry if it seems like I'm going pretty slow. It's because I am still very sick. All right. So that's it for Go Fiber. I think um, that's enough for understanding the framework. I think it's a fantastic framework, and um, it's really, really good to get you started building cool applications, um, backend applications. Before I go, I want to thank our Patreon subscriber. Thank you so much, uh, Michael. Um, so if you have made it this far and um, you're not a subscriber, please consider subscribing. If you are a returning subscriber, thank you so much. Appreciate your patience. I really, really do appreciate your patience. The fact that you are here watching this video as a subscriber a month after I posted the last video, um, you know, thanks for your support. I can't thank you enough. And um, look forward to seeing you in the next video. Um, hopefully, I'll be a lot better when I talk to you again. All right, see you in the next video. Stay safe. Thank you.